uh, appreciate everyone joining today for the uh, presentation we're going to be talking about, specifically Feedfresh, uh, our premier silage cover that we manufacture here in Sioux Falls. So um, to get us started, I'll introduce myself um, and let Derek Kim to get his background as well. But I've been with Viaflex uh, roughly for five years, working specifically in the silage market. Um, previously to that, I'd spent about 15 years um, in various roles uh, in the dairy industry, basically direct selling to uh, dairy farms, whether that be feed additives or um, basically forage inoculants or forage preservatives. So that's my background, and um, I'll let Derek give give his his background as well. Real quick, guys, gentlemen. Sorry, Derek. Uh, real quick, Dusty, can we have you lean a little bit closer? It's kind of hard to hear you. You're a little airy. Can we have you either lean in closer to your mic or, or if you have a headset, please? Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Dusty. Uh, so my name is Derek Hoover. I'm Director of Engineering uh, here at Viaflex. I've uh, been in the industry for uh, over 13 years now, and uh, my team and I were responsible really um, for all of the markets that we serve, and we'll touch just at a high level on, on what those markets are, um, but really strive to engage with the customers and understand different challenges that uh, you may be having, and then how we can take that information and hopefully develop a, a solution that, that works for your application and, and for your needs. So that's really at, at a high level what my team's focused on. Um, and uh, looking forward to talking uh, more in depth about uh, Feedfresh specifically today. So, basically, uh, our mission at Bioflex, uh, we've developed a lot of different pro products over the years that are very market specific um, to provide a specific solution for customer application, and we. We drive and develop innovative solutions in those areas um, to exceed customer expectations. And, and while we're doing that, um, also engage with our local community uh, to be a good steward of our community and our employees. Uh, so probably most of you on here uh, have a longer history working with or knowing Raven Engineer Films. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we became uh, Bioflex as a standalone a uh, company that's owned by a private equity group out of Chicago. Um, so basically looking to continue continue our legacy uh, that's been built over the, the decades here um, that focuses on excellent customer service, uh, excellent product quality, as well as uh, continuing uh, customer-centric driven solutions and uh, continuing to innovate with our internal uh, research and development teams. So, like uh, Dusty mentioned, we we really strive to compete on quality, service, and innovation, and that goes way back to our core uh, when we were still uh, Raven Engineered Films. Uh, we've carried uh, those uh, dimensions of competition forward uh, as we uh, embark on our Bioflex journey, um, and that really allowed us to be uh, an industry leader uh, in those areas. And uh, I mentioned we service a, a lot of different markets, uh, so we are not just egg focused, uh, but that's what the, the topic of discussion is today. But outside of egg, we do have a construction market. Uh, you're probably familiar with um, uh, when you put up a, a new hotel or new high rise, there'll be a, uh, an enclosure film that goes around the scaffolding. Uh, we make a lot of that material that's used to help protect the workers from the external environment during uh, new construction projects. Um, we have the energy and geomembrane market, and this is really uh, where pro we're providing containment uh, systems or barriers uh, for different uses. Um, on the geomembrane side, it can be, uh, you know, decorative water ponds or decorative features outside of a casino or a hotel or golf course, um, and really protecting, um, you know, weed growth and things like that from coming up into the water structure. Uh, energy, we have a, a heavy presence down in Texas to support the fracking industry down in the Permian. Um, where we'll provide containment systems for um, water and the different liquids that are used uh, throughout that fracking process. Um, we also provide uh, vapor barriers, similar to the technology we'll talk about today um, on the geomembrane side, uh, where we're containing um, odors or different chemicals. So if you think of a, a landfill, we'll put a cap over the top of landfills to help mitigate the odor that's coming off of that. Uh, or on the bottom side to help prevent some of the leachate from getting down into the water table beneath it. 
Um, we also have an industrial market, and that's really a, a miscellaneous. There's a lot of different applications that fit into that from uh, medical gowns to uh, large bladders that can transport uh, juices, oils, wines inside of a shipping container. Um, and then a, a new addition to the markets we serve uh, going back to the first of this calendar year uh, is the telecom industry. So we are able to produce um, three quarter inch up to about three inch um, high density polyethylene conduit pipe uh, to help support the fibercom uh, and telecom industry. So looking at, uh, uh, next slide, Dusty, looking at some of the locations that we have. Um, so we're headquartered out of uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, so right smack dab in the middle of the Midwest here. Um, but we do have uh, different, uh, so 95% of our manufacturing takes place uh, in Sioux Falls. We do have some extrusion equipment uh, out on the East Coast over in Virginia. Um, and that's really focused on kind of a, a composite. So we do some protrusion, um, extrusion through that facility, but most of our manufacturing actually takes place in Sioux Falls. And then the outline facilities in uh, Texas and uh, Madison, South Dakota, Brandon, South Dakota, they're doing um, fabrication or they're converting uh, master rolls that we would make in our Sioux Falls facility and then right sizing them uh, or custom uh, sizes for the customer to where when you get it on your site and you're putting it out over a silage pile, um, it's going to fit. It's not going to require um, a lot of field welds um, during the installation process. Here's just kind of a, an overview of our Sioux Falls facility. Um, so um, a pretty large campus. We do have um, 15 extrusion lines um, in this facility. Uh, of those, we do have two that are cast extrusion. And you can see kind of on the left side of the picture, there's some towers. Um, that's where we fit our blown film lines, and it requires uh, a lot of elevation for us to allow that bubble uh, as it's being extruded to cool down before it goes through a nip up at the, the very top of those towers. So that allows us to get adequate cooling uh, into the products uh, as we're manufacturing them. So I look at FeedFresh uh, for us on the silage application as a beneficiary of uh, a lot of the other products we make at Bioflex. Uh, we share some of that same technology that uh, Derek talked about in other applications. So we're sort of able, able to uh, uh, use uh, our equipment that are for other industries and other markets for uh, silage. And that allows us to be uh, unique in this material and unique uh, to our customer needs when it comes to come to feed fresh and unique. It's a unique product out there. Um, basically the end goal of feed fresh is really for the end user to reduce spoilage and increase profits. Um, we also, uh, that we do that through a high puncture and tear strength of the material itself, as well as uh, this being a barrier film, uh, an extremely low uh, oxygen transmission rate uh, of actually 0.98 cubic centimeters per square meter per day. Um, and the other aspect of this material is its 18 month longevity. Um, so what we mean by that specifically is after 18 months of exposure in the Southern uh, hemisphere. So like to say the Southern uh, US, we could take that material, take it back to the lab and it would still uh, come within 5% of the original specifications on that product. So, very good UV stability over the over long period. So what really makes the, the feed fresh silage cover unique is uh, as you look at the, the schematic that uh, Dusty is showing right now, um, there's a lot of technology uh, that goes into the product and it, it combines a lot of our uh, different manufacturing processes to consolidate that into a composite structure that provides the exceptional uh, tear and puncture and barrier resistance that uh, that Dusty was alluding to. Um, so it is not just a straightforward polyethylene film. Uh, it actually goes through multiple manufacturing processes and it all starts with uh, blown film extrusion. Um, so we have a wide range of blown film uh, capabilities here, uh, but we do have multiple lines that we can um, extrude uh, a seven or even up to nine layer uh, film. and that capability allows us to fine tune individual layers of that composite structure to meet a different need. Um, so Dusty mentioned, you know, 18 month longevity. 
we can tailor that outside surface with uh, antioxidants and UV blockers and UV absorbers uh, to make sure that um, we're meeting the longevity expectations of the different applications that we're developing products in, into. Um, and we can tailor the core layers in this case to contain an oxygen barrier, which is really gonna promote uh, the quality of the silage at the end of the season after you're done storing and you begin your feed out. Um, and then from there, we'll take it to a lamination process where we'll incorporate uh, polyester reinforcement uh, into it to where you're gonna get exceptional uh, mechanical properties. So tensile properties, tear properties, puncture properties, um, in a very lightweight film to match those physical properties, you're typically looking at a film that's going to be uh, two to three times heavier uh, or thicker uh, without having that reinforcing layer into it. Um, and then ultimately, we'll send it to one of our outline facilities to convert it uh, into the right size to uh, to match the the bunker or the pile um, that the the silage cover is going to be used in. So a lot of technology going into the structure. And if we break it down a little bit further and really zoom into what, what I believe gives it uh, the biggest value add uh, is the oxygen barrier performance uh, that it does offer. Um, so very easy schematic here. If you look at the, the top picture um, where it says feed fresh, um, in that white layer of film, we are able to incorporate what's called uh, EVOH. It's ethyl vinyl alcohol. And uh, we can put that as a very thin layer in the core of that white uh, skin and that is an exceptional oxygen barrier. So it will basically reflect or uh, keep any oxygen molecules from permeating through that membrane um, over time, which really helps protect the integrity uh, of the silage itself. If you compare that to a standard polyethylene film, uh, so the bottom picture is gonna show that, um, you are talking orders of magnitude, uh, two to three orders of magnitude better uh, oxygen transmission barrier uh, using the feed fresh product and specifically due to the EVOH that is incorporated uh, into that structure. That's an example of uh, some wheat ledge uh, that was in California uh, that was covered by a feed fresh cover and just showing a bit of a real world result as far as, you know, barring all the technical information we can give you on the film. Um, so the end user is going to perform and provide a very, very nice uh, quality feed and at the most efficient um, fermentation rate that is possible. So as we compare um, our oxygen transmission qualities, so how good of a barrier it is to some competitor films in the marketplace out there, um, both on the top of that chart and the bottom of that chart, uh, we see Seal Fresh, our two-step oxygen barrier, and then Feed Fresh on the bottom uh, do offer uh, superior performance in the marketplace against competitors out there. Uh, so we can say with a lot of confidence, we have um, one of the best products to offer in the industry when it comes to oxygen barrier. And one thing we've kind of already talked to uh, a decent amount is our overall capabilities. And we're really focusing on uh, the multi-layer technology to incorporate those barrier layers uh, uh, into the final product, uh, as well as our lamination capabilities to add that additional mechanical strength uh, through the polyester scrim reinforcement. Um, so there are other barrier options that can be used and uh, Vioflux actually um, provides material for two-step options. Um, but you're not getting the same mechanical performance out of the two-step options as you are out of the, the one-step uh, feed fresh option uh, because of the capabilities that we have. So from a, a broad range, we can do very thin films, less than one one-thousandth of an inch thick or one mil thick. Um, we can do very heavy films all the way north of 80 mils thick that can incorporate uh, multi-layers again to address a certain need in each individual layer. Um, and then taking it through the lamination process to help lightweight that material, but providing exceptional mechanical properties um, and ver very vertically integrated. Um, we'll then convert it into a, a configuration that works for the end user. And in some instances, we will go and install as well. Um, our installation is primarily focused on the geomembrane and energy side, uh, but very vertically integrated, uh, which helps us service our customer base at, at a, a very high level. So 
mentioned uh, custom widths and lengths. Uh, we really want the material to arrive on site uh, in the right configuration to where you don't have to do um, much for field um, seaming. Uh, and that really drives the quality of our product. The more seams and uh, fabrication that we can do in a controlled environment inside, uh, the higher quality those seams are going to be. So we really try to mitigate that and do as much of the, the free fabrication as possible and providing custom uh, widths and lengths to match um, the individual need of the of the, the silage pile. Yeah, not only do we do custom sizes, we also will be able to provide um, the correct configuration, the most unique and efficient configuration when it comes to how the cover actually deploys. And that's something that is unique, uh, very unique to us and the feed fresh, the product itself, just because of the way it's made. Um, so, for example, here, we are able to configure feed fresh uh, to unroll um, the width of a bunker. So here, the width, the bunker is 50 feet wide. We can actually unroll the 50 feet and then pull out the, the length of the bunker. And the real benefit of this is it allows um, the end user to save a tremendous amount of labor when it comes to ballasting that cover. Uh, that's probably the, the most labor intensive part of covering a silage pile is actually the ballast process, bringing uh, the sidewalls or the, or the whole tires up on top of that plastic in order to, to weight it down and keep it in place um, throughout the season and out the season as well. So, the, the arrangement of the, the way this cover unfolds is very important um, to the end user when it comes to saving labor. Another example here. So you can see as they, they can actually pull it out um, in, in like 20 foot increments and bring tires from the, the face of the pile or up the front of the pile and bring tires to the cover to cover as you go, as we like to say. And this picture kind of shows that as well. This is one um, where uh, this is a drive over pile application where they're we're piling up against a uh, an old crop face that was there and basically uh, you know rolling out the the plastic uh, the feed fresh in a fashion that allows the seams to be uh, shed water and as well as us to bring tires up from the, the front of the pile and just uh, save a lot of labor in that in doing it that way. So when we talk about um, oxygen barriers and we can really have a lot of data to look back at really. Um, this uh, was published in the uh, Journal of Dairy Science in 2018, really a meta-analysis look, looking at uh, about 40 plus uh, research uh, trials that were done out there and really looking at the dry matter loss in the three feet, the top three feet of the pile. So when using an oxygen barrier, um, we can really cut that dry matter loss uh, roughly in half. So just because the top 30 inches of that pile is, is the least compacted, it's probably the least dense, has probably the most oxygen in it. So uh, when, we, when we provide a cover that is impermeable, impermeable to oxygen, uh, that allows us to basically create uh, the most efficient environment for, for an anaerobic um, fermentation process. This is uh, probably one of the most recent studies that's that's been done on looking at oxygen barriers and silage applications. This is a, a study that was done in, in Brazil in 2017 uh, with, with actually our product uh, Seal Fresh, our two-step product. They lined a, a bunker uh, lengthwise halfway down the pile uh, with seal fresh. And then the other half they covered just with a traditional polyethylene cover. Uh, so like a six mil black white uh, material. And at the end of the day, they took samples out of the top three feet of that layer of each side of that pile. And from a nutrient analysis standpoint, um, when using uh, an oxygen barrier film, there was 256 pounds more milk per ton of dry matter in the silage that was covered with the oxygen barrier film. So, you know, in the field, we talk about a lot about spoilage and visible losses and 
um, heating and all that sort of thing. This really drives it home from a uh, nutrient uh, analysis standpoint that barring all the visual things you will see with an oxygen barrier, there is more milk in that feed. And this was done, they compared the, the, the samples out of the, that top layer to a core sample and looked at the difference in that. So basically, we can we can look at real world results here. Derek's going to talk about some actually some uh, some pictures that were a little uh, trial that was done in Mexico. Um, increased milk production because of the higher quality feed uh, that's being fed out of the pile. But here's the visual, and pictures tell um, often tell a better story than looking at data sets. And if you look at the the bottom half. Um, that uh, uses the oxygen barrier. Um, so this goes back to that study that Dusty was just talking about. You've got the bottom half of the picture where there was an oxygen barrier. You got the top half where there's not. Um, and very evident, uh, it's a literally a night and day difference um, uh, between the two sizes of the pile. Um, so really shows the, the importance of having that oxygen barrier to help protect um, the quality of the feed. Here's kind of the, the, the same pile, but just looking at more of a, a cross section. It's a little bit harder to see here, um, but you can see on the, the left left half, uh, especially if you look at the, the top layer next to the film, uh, you can see more spoilage there uh, versus the right half of the picture um, where virtually there's there's no visible spoilage. And that's due to, again, the, the oxygen barrier that's present. So then if we take that same pile and look at it from uh, thermal imaging. Uh, so where you're going to see hot spots, uh, there's going to be a lot more um, microbial activity that's happening in that place that is going to drive spoilage. Um, so if you look at the left half of the picture again, you're going to see red areas or hot spots, um, and that's due to the oxygen being able to come through and then increasing the amount of microbial activity uh, in those regions. So you'll see more spoilage in the the top region. Um, and then if you look at the far left edge of the pile too, you're going to see some additional hotspots. The right side of the picture um, is going to have an oxygen barrier. So you see much less of those hotspots, which again is going to lead to um, reduced spoilage uh, at the end of its um, at the end of its longevity use. Next picture is actually looking at a two step uh, system where it's using our seal fresh gold. Um, so that's where there's going to be about roughly a, a, a two mil um, unreinforced uh, barrier film. That's that yellow film that you see there on the, the right half of the picture um, as kind of the first step. And then you're going to come over the top of that generally with, a, a, say, a five or six mil uh, black, white, um, straight polyethylene film is kind of the second step of that process. Um, but it tells the same story with the oxygen barrier presence on the right side where you have that seal fresh material. Um, you do not see any visible spoilage um, on the left side. You definitely see that darker band that goes all the way across the top and down the side. Um, and that is your visual spoilage um, from the oxygen that's present uh, in that area of the pile. So as we kind of drive this home, um, you know, this is an example of a pile I took some pictures of out in New York State. Uh, just really looking at some real world application when it comes to using a competitor product. Uh, in this example on the left-hand picture, they were putting holes in this cover uh, simply by walking on it. And, you know, when we're at the covering stage of a silage pile, we're really kind of crossing the finish line. So we like to talk about the importance of just protecting what all the work you've, in, you've done and all your investment you've already made. And this is just an example of, of using pretty much an inferior product um, that did not yield very good results for this uh, this customer here uh, from, you know, the initial stages of installation and putting holes in it, as well as at the time of feed out, they are, they're um, having to remove the spoilage off the top of this pile and, you know, just experience um, the most shrink, uh, the most expensive shrink you can. I mean, the most expensive feed you had, I have, I always say, is the stuff you, you throw away. So, um, just getting no value out of out of it, and then incurring additional costs 
uh, by having to remove it and spread it out back in the field. And, and you know, some of the detrimental effects that can have as far as spreading, uh, you know, high loads of mold and yeast out in your, your field, you're going to be probably growing uh, next year's crop in. So basically feed fresh, we're reducing spoilage uh, and increasing profits through not only reducing spoilage, dry matter loss, increasing nutrient value, as well as reducing uh, mold and yeast counts to reduce uh, heating at the time of feed out. Uh, we're doing that by lowering the oxygen transmission rate in the material itself. Um, and because we provide a very nice, uh, the most ideal fermentation environment we can, we're gonna have a very nice, uh, pleasant feed that's going to feed well and have very nice palatability to it. Um, as well as we talked about some of the configurations we can provide and custom sizes we can provide that, that are going to provide an easy installation for for the customer at the end of the day uh, that provide the whole package of the real world results. Any questions at the current time? Yeah, Dusty, I've got one for you. Um, can you talk a little bit about the installation process of Feed Fresh? Uh, difficult, easy. Um, just walk us through that a little bit. What does that look like? Well, I would say we're going to provide probably one of the easiest covers to install. And in the fact that it's custom sized, we can uh, and we can also orient it in the best fashion for your your storage size and type. Um, as well as feed fresh is accordion folded. So it unfolds in a very nice fashion in six bit increments at a time that stay down out of the wind uh, when you're when you're having a wind event at the time of covering. Um, as well as you're able to use some some larger tires and uh, that sort of thing around the perimeter of the cover if you're in a really windy area just to provide additional ballasting um, that you probably couldn't use if you're using, you know, a traditional smooth product, uh, you'd end up putting holes in it and that sort of thing. Um, as well as, you know, traditional black white covers are center folded. And when the products are center folded, you have to deploy pretty much the whole cover over the entire pile. And you just end up covering, uh, carrying tires a long distance across that cover. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of work no matter what you do, but feed fresh will basically enable you to uh, be as efficient and efficient with your labor as possible. Thank you. That's a good explanation. Before we wrap, any any questions, Trevor, John, Andre, William, any questions at all you guys might have? I have one. Uh, how wide can you go? We're limited uh, by the total weight of the roll as a width option. Uh, we've provided covers that are 400 plus feet wide. So I've never really had a, an application where we couldn't meet a width requirement. Yeah, we're limited at about 8,000 pounds from our, our winder capabilities, but that's generally uh, uh, much larger than what's uh, required for, for these applications. Right. Right. If we have no further questions, um, if you want to, I will, uh, yeah, you want to wrap it up real quick and then we'll go into the uh, giveaway, Dusty? Sorry. Sure. No, I just want to thank everybody for joining and, and you know, as I get around in, in the world, I think, uh, Bill, I'll actually probably see you next week in Pennsylvania. So I uh, look forward to seeing everybody out in the field and working together and, and really appreciate your time on the presentation today.